Hello, Lovelace, and welcome to our next English session, carrying on with our joint write-up of the story of Beowulf. So today it's, can I use the shared box up to write the next part of a story? Okay, we've got to focus on the shared writing bit, the ideas that we put together in our last live session. Uh, later on, I will be asking you to create your own version of the story, but today we're going to share our say so work on our shared ideas uh, and see if you can use that box up to move forward with the next section but today we're going to look at a part together first of all though, a little short task just to get your brains working i'd like you to write two sentences that's all just two sentences but i want you want them to include as many of the following words as possible but it must make sense few times we've had some of these descriptive sentences or extended sentences and you can get a little bit waffly so be careful i would much rather you missed a couple of the words you didn't use some a couple of the words than it became nonsensical okay so two sensible sentences that really do make sense and use some of these words really really well so here are your words. We've got gruesome, lavish, frothing, tyrant, grisly, writhe, ebbing, formless, disarray, tragedy. Now, all of these words featured in our class text. We've talked about the definitions, the meanings of each one. If you can't remember, you've got a couple of choices. You could go back through the videos and find them. You could look at your own notes. I know some of you did a really, really good job of copying down some of these definitions, some, some of these words, so you could use them again in your writing. Or you could simply go to a dictionary. Okay. So what we've got there, uh, 10 words, two sentences. I would be amazed if you could fit all 10 words in there. I would much rather you did seven or eight and it was a really good sentence that made sense and was clear. OK, but there's your little short write task. If you want to pause the video now and have a go at that, please feel free or come back to it later. I don't mind. <coughs> Excuse me. But moving on. Okay, Here's our box up. Some of the ideas that, were, that came out during the live session. I have extended on this, I've expanded it through, from the anticipation, through the dream and the frustration, through the nightmare, and finally to the escape. Okay, now I've been quite generous, I think, with some of these notes, uh, but they still need a lot of expansion. You need to pad these out and create really, really good stories. Now, last time we did the anticipation together. I worked you through how I was going to build the anticipation, or most of it. I'd say I could argue that I didn't quite finish that first bit. It would have been nice to carry on for a few more minutes, but we just ran out of time. I asked you to go away and write your dream and into the frustration part of the story. So really, you were talking about the arrival of Alice. Okay, Alice was our uh, warrior who was going to come across sailed to Iceland, having found out about the story of the dragon. She was going to cross to Iceland and prove her courage. Uh, so she, was, she brought her father's armour, his sword, his shield, and she arrived to find the queen sobbing in her castle because her village had been burnt down. All the villagers either killed or had run away because of the attacks of the dragon. So Alice was coming to save her. You were, you were writing that part of the story for me. I am looking forward to seeing some of those arrive on tapestry in the next day or two. And today I'm going to look at how I, I would build the frustration part. So Alice has arrived. And remember, the frustration is that point just before the, the fight, just before the battle, as they approach each other either one going to the other or them both traveling. It's entirely up to you. And then the beginning of the fight. But I want to sh share with you how I would start this section. 
And then your task will be to complete the frustration and write, carry on to write the nightmare and the escape based on this box up, based on the information in front of you now. OK. We're not writing our own ideas just yet. We're, this is the shared one. Okay, Hopefully that is clear. So there we go. We're going to run through a shared write of the beginning of the frustration. Then using your previous start and the ideas we come up with, which are here in front of us now, you're going to finish the story. So these are the three sections you're going to do. You can use my frustration from today and carry that on. Or you can write your own. That's entirely up to you. So you can carry on from where I leave off. Or you can start the frustration yourself. You're going to write, carry on with the nightmare section. Okay, so this is where Alice is really struggling in the fight. And as a reader, we think this could be all over. So she was brave to go in there, but it's not going very well. And then we carry on to the miraculous escape where somehow... Alice, our hero, manages to succeed in her challenge, in her quest to beat the dragon. Okay, so that's going to be your challenge to either write the frustration for yourself or carry on and complete from where I leave off and then continue using these box ups to complete our story. Okay, later in the week, you will be writing your own, but for now, this is the class ideas. Okay, right. Here we go then. So I put the box up just at the top there to remind us of some of the notes we made. And then I'm just going to close down the screen screenshot uh, to allow me to type into this. Okay, right. Let's Okay, right. Now, the start. Oops. Oh, I'm trying, just need to get rid of that. Sorry, guys. Let me get myself out of the way. There we go. So I can see the top there. And now it's got rid of. What? Sorry, guys. My te technology is just letting me down here. Right, let's. Why is that not letting me the text box? There we go. That's better. Right. So we start on the day of the battle. And I, w why is it not letting me type now? There we go. I'm not quite sure what's ha what happened there. But anyway, uh, we start in our little box there, talking about the first flickering signs of day. We think about a time reference. So it's the, it's the start of, the, of this new day. So I was thinking, what about the night? We left the story in the dream section. We left the story with the queen having provided room and board. She's given her a place to sleep. How would Alice have slept? If you were a warrior about to face a dragon, how might you have slept the night before? So I thought something like tossing and turning, because I don't think she would have had a particularly settled sleep. I mean, Alice is our hero. But the fact that she's trying to prove herself as a warrior doesn't make me think that she is She's had any huge battles in the past. This could be her biggest battle so far. So I'm sure she's quite nervous. So I think her sleep would have been quite unsettled. So tossing and turning. Alice's sleep is fitful. Okay, tossing and turning, Alice's sleep is fitful. Oh, I've just spotted something there. Because I know in the, my first section, 
I wrote this in the past tense. Remember, we're telling a story. So if you remember, my first line was, join me and listen well as I take you on a journey. This story has happened. It's in the past. So I need to make sure my tenses match that. Okay, so tossing and turning, Alice's sleep was fitful. Her dreams haunted. Oops. By the images shared in the stories of the previous evening. I'm thinking that the queen sat her down and told her all about the dragon, about all the horrible things it had done. And those images, those ideas are going to stick in her head. So as she sleeps and dreams, I'm sure some of those horrible, horrible images will have haunted her dreams. The tossing and turning, Alice's sleep was fitful. Her dreams haunted by images shared in the stories of the previous evening. And I'm going to start a new paragraph now because I'm starting a new time. So my, the story has moved on in time. So at the first oops, flickering, the first flickering signs of day, so our new day has started. The brave warrior marched march forth from not from she's going to go through i think through the gates of, uh, of arborg remember that was the name of our village sword in hand Remember, she, she was carrying her father's weapons, her father's sword and his wooden shield. Sword, oh, I've put I there. Sorry, always rereading, always just double checking that you've written or typed what you hope to. Okay, Brave Warrior marched through the gates of Arborg, sword in hand, and trusted shield strapped to. Uh, back. Okay. Leaving the valley behind. Again, remember from our earlier section, we talked about Arburg being being hidden in a valley. So she's now leaving this valley. So leaving the valley behind. The ground became. rocky now if i look back to my uh box of ideas i actually talked about the terrain the terrain being rocky now maybe terrain is a better word than ground okay so the terrain became rocky and difficult to navigate so very difficult to get across sharp rocky stones that's what we're going to explain next sharp so describing it sharp uh ridges the edges of the stones sharp ridges cut into her shoes now Back in those days, they would have been wearing shoes. They would have basically been uh, leather animal skins wrapped around their feet. So they wouldn't have had hard soles like we do, but they would have had their feet would have been wrapped. So they would have been old versions of shoes. But these stones would have been cutting into those. Progress. So moving forward, it's difficult. So progress was slow. But as the sun reached 
its highest. So this indicates what time of day it is. If the sun's at its highest, it must be around midday. So we're in the middle of the day now. So she's been walking all morning. As the sun reaches its highest, Alice saw a mountain in the distance. Now we need to think of a home for where our dragon is going to be, somewhere, it's, say, where it's settled. And my thinking there is that a, a dragon would be in a cave somewhere. So we need a mountain, we need a rock face, we need somewhere where this cave can be. So Alice saw a mountain in the distance. A towering. So a bit a parenthesis here. We're adding some extra information. She saw a mountain in the distance. We could say full stop right there. But I want to paint a clearer picture for our readers. So I'm going to add a parenthesis. I'm going to add some extra information. A towering fortress of granite. Oops. Okay, so we've added that extra little bit of information. Carved into the foot of the mountain. A cave. A new line because I'm going to have it set thought or a piece of speech. So, well, oh, can't spell. Could this be the dragon's lair? She asked herself. Okay, so we've now got Alice working working away towards what she believes to be the dragon's cave. She's on her way. Okay. Now, that's as far as I'm going to take it for today. I would like you to think about those first appearances. Now, there are some clear notes here. I think we've been quite generous with some of these notes. So we're only partway down. We need her to move towards the entrance. We need her to call out to the dragon. We've used the rule of three here. Unias, savage beast of nightmares, I'm here to end your torment. Show yourself. Show yourself. Show yourself, she cries. So you think of how you can expand on these sentences, expand on these notes to really enhance and make this story fantastic. So once you've been disturbed, we get torrent a flame ripping through the cave. Picked up on a spelling there, sorry. Double, right. Uh, a torrent of flame ripping through the cave, and we've got Alice hiding behind her father's shield. But remember, it's a wooden shield. So think about what, what would happen if a dragon's flame hits a wooden shield. Well, it would burn. Okay. So she's going to have to hide behind some other form of barrier, maybe the rocks outside the cave. Okay, we're on a mountainside here, so there's going to be large rocks dotted around. So maybe she's hiding behind some of those. And then we get the first sign of our dragon. So think about that. When you're writing, what does your dragon look like? Think about all that figurative language we could use to describe various features. Think about your sensory words, not just how does it look, but how does it sound? Maybe how does it feel? Is Alice close enough to touch the creature? So you're gonna carry on now with the frustration, with the beginning of the fight. You're then gonna move into the nightmare where things are going really, really badly for Alice to the point where as a reader, we think this is all over. She can't possibly get out of this. There are little notes there to help you. If we go back, there we go. All the ideas are there for you in the nightmare. Okay. So he's got her pinned down. She's 
caught in a crevice. She's stuck in a gap in the rock. And he is just about to breathe out the fire and turn her to ash. But he's had to put his head through a small gap. And he's actually sort of just nipped. He's caught his throat. And so his fire, his flames won't come out. Just smoke. Okay, so Alice is able to escape, crawl underneath him, and then try again with her sword. Okay, so all the notes are there for you. So there's your task. Complete the frustration, write the nightmare, and wrap up the story with a miraculous escape. Okay, so there's your task for today. Good luck. Enjoy your writing. There's some brilliant ideas. You've come up with some wonderful things to put into the story. And then later this week, you will get the opportunity to write your own version of this story. Not the class shared one, but your own version. But for now, that's the end of today's lesson. Take care of yourselves and take care of those around you. Stay safe and I will speak to you all soon.